Well, I would like to start with two apologies and one thank you. So uh, the first one is uh, to all of you for keeping you from these tantalizing sounds upstairs, myself included. Uh, second is uh, thank you very much for uh, Cartel, because today is the birthday of my son. He has 17 uh, years in Paris. I'm based in Paris. But uh, I agreed to come because I love Cartel uh, since 20 years. I think since when I had my first uh, Stark and Delir or something like this. Uh, and the second apology is to stir because I think I stirred or subverted your theme. Uh, or instead of art of storytelling, I would like to talk about uh, the art as storytelling or art as storytelling tool for uh, brands. So, uh, first of all, of course, we all know that uh, since time immemorial, art uh, uh, served to tell stories. Like uh, in this, uh, uh, I consider a very beautiful uh, rock carving from Libya that uh, dates back to 12,000 years. And this is the story of uh, apparently a wedding and, you know, somebody is washing the hair, uh, somebody is cooking, etc., uh, etc. Et and I think pretty much since uh, these times, at least uh, in the Western world, uh, art uh, uh, until the 20th century has been predominantly uh, uh, narrative and, and really depicted stories that come from religions, uh, come from literature, like in this uh, beautiful uh, bio uh, tapestry, which apparently has been uh, created in this country. And you know that uh, probably this year or the next year, for the first time in its history, is going to come to uh, the UK. Uh, apparently, uh, but it's still in Normandy, so which is uh, that's where I have my country house, um, and it tells in detail from the beginning, from uh, uh, more or less where I live, uh, how uh, uh, William the Conqueror uh, came up until uh, the uh, Battle of Hastings, leading, of course, to your uh, glorious uh, dynasty. Uh, 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 including the new king, the que Queen Elizabeth apparently said that she's the direct descendant from William the Conqueror. Um, and of course, in general, I would say that art is storytelling by definition, right? Because the objective of art is to communicate. And I think this piece by one of my favorite artists, Louis Kamnitzer, uh, uh, several years ago uh, says uh, for itself, the museum is a school, the artist learns to communicate, the public learns to make connections, right? To read the story in their mind. Uh, and of course, the storytelling capacity of art, just as of any uh, kind of piece of popular culture is based on a simple premise that words are images and images are words and importantly processed by our mind so the faculty of mind is, is very important and here I uh, just put together uh, uh, a very famous limestone from one of the greatest shrines uh, in India uh, with this uh, Jatakas, uh, so-called, which would have the stories of the uh, birth uh, uh, of Buddha next to manga. And, and, and in fact, the reading is also, uh, you know, kind of from this corner to that corner uh, in, um, in the same way. By the way, uh, for those who don't know, One Piece, uh, which is the, the, the best-selling manga in the world, it is also the highest-grossing media franchise beating all the movies, all the, you know, kind of uh, 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 things that we know. And going back to this faculty of mind, it is interesting how Marcel Duchamp, again, another Norman that I am proud of, uh, 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 and the father of, or one of the fathers of contemporary art, uh, uh, how he explained his move uh, towards uh, conceptual art. And he said, I was interested in ideas, not merely in visual uh, products. I wanted to put painting once again at the service of mind, right? And so we have this, uh, uh, again, even in the 20th century, this uh, importance of, uh, of mind and this kind of narration that happens in, in the mind. And of course, uh, since conceptual art is a narrative, uh, and according to uh, one of the fathers of conceptual art, uh, Joseph Kassouz, uh, Every art or all art uh, uh, after Duchamp is a narrative. Um, 
all art is conceptual in nature because art only exists conceptually. Joseph Kasutz. And when we go to brands, of course, uh, brands really create narratives. And, and all brands, uh, uh, brand expressions, uh, in fact, are narrations. You know, fundamentally, that's what uh, marketers do. And, and of course, all emotions uh, that, that uh, are sought by, by brands, either surprise or joy or shock for some people, like in this uh, 2003 uh, Gucci advertisement, uh, they are all some kind of narrations. And, uh, and of course, uh, we all talked and all the guest speakers talked uh, about the, the, the fact that uh, uh, great story has a great power. And people value great stories. They attach that, and they could attach value to the great stories. The fact that cartel chair costs much more than a similar chair, it is because the stories, because the names that are attached to that really add value uh, to this uh, product. And, and, and the power of storytelling helps brands really increase the value, uh, uh, at least more or less in the same way as Maurizio Catalan did for uh, uh, the fashion shoot uh, some years ago. And so I believe that brands could and should recourse to art and to borrow its storytelling power to make their own stories more second degree, first of all, because m many brands do it like really into the face in, in a very kind of uh, stupid way. Uh, not cartel. <laughs> uh, more meaningful and more time uh, transcending. This is an example uh, that I like uh, by Ruinach, uh, collaboration with Liu Bolan, the Chinese artist, and the stories which uh, talks about sustainability and what's going on, uh, etc. And uh, this is uh, a very important advice. This is my personal story that I received from a friend of mine, Sean Kelly, that uh, maybe some of you know, it's one of the top gallerists uh, from New York. And he said, you absolutely need to bring Duchamp to the business world by truly bringing the conceptual process into play with a physical object. One can dramatically increase the value of that object. And of course, we all know uh, the story of that object and how uh, the, the storytelling and contextualization of that object completely changed uh, from a pissoir to a fountain uh, uh, through the act of an artist. And so, with all that philosophy in mind, uh, for uh, quite uh, a long time, I really wanted to create a brand that would take all of that and kind of do it um, uh, in a perfect way. And so, uh, um, together with a partner of mine, Robert Wilson, who is uh, uh, a great uh, entrepreneur uh, and art collector, uh, we uh, created uh, a brand called Tense Muse, it's a vodka brand, that really uh, tried at least, and I hope you will see, tried embed art uh, uh, and its kind of storytelling capacity at every level of uh, the brand. So meet Tense Muse, uh, we launched only last year, so many of you probably haven't seen it. Uh, so it's the first blended variety-specific uh, barley vodka inspired by Scottish uh, uh, spirit-making traditions. Um, so what is important is that since the beginning we wanted to look at spirits really as a cultural product, really uh, rooted deeply in uh, the history, in, in human history, and in humans' capacity to tell stories. And it is uh, kind of, uh, all of this really informs uh, our creation. And, uh, and we tried also to bring something which I called art thinking into the DNA of the brand. So Tense Muse is born from Jupiter Artland, uh, which is a sculpture park uh, near Edinburgh, uh, one of the most beautiful uh, sculpture park in the world, I have to say, and it is our spiritual home. And so many inspirations come uh, from, from this park. Not only our name, but the whole philosophy and ethos of the brand is really inspired by, uh, uh, by that place and the artists who are there. So our brand name, written X Muse, but uh, pronounced 10th Muse, is referring, first of all, to uh, uh, this idea that, uh, uh, in fact, uh, there are only nine muses. And the tenth muse uh, uh, historically represented the combination of all the nine muses. And, and, and in fact, uh, 
she was the uh, kind of female uh, equivalent of an Apollo. And she took all the powers of her nine uh, sisters. But it, it is also the title of a sculpture that you can find at uh, Jupiter Artland, uh, uh, one of, again, the most fantastic uh, uh, artists of this country, Ian Hamilton Finley, philosopher, poet, gardener. Um, and he uh, uh, created this uh, sculpture that uh, depicts supposedly Sappho. And Plato referred to Sappho as 10th muse because of her uh, uh, amazing powers. Another reference for us that we embedded into the brand is Charles Jenks, who was a like, very famous uh, architect, writer, uh, and landscape artist. And uh, so, so this uh, um, uh, landscape work uh, frames the aquifer that we, uh, uh, that we use for, uh, as a water source. And, and we also embedded this type of storytelling through the shape uh, and the design of the bottle. So you can see these uh, kind of uh, curving landforms uh, uh, you can find on uh, the bespoke, uh, bespoke bottle. And another reference that we also brought uh, at, at the core of uh, our brand and uh, as part of the layering of stories uh, is this work by Annie Galaccio, another great artist and her um, um, kind of installation, which is called The Light Pours Out of Me, uh, which is a grotto, uh, fully covered by Amethyst, very esoteric work. We don't have time to uh, cover that, but we brought that uh, in terms of the product because uh, we add, uh, uh, at the end of the process, we add what we call the magic drop, so it's part of water which is steeped on Amethyst crystals. Uh, so Robert is uh, uh, his main business is in hom homeopathy. So uh, we really work on these very uh, things that you can uh, you cannot really see. So we continue the storytelling by developing uh, various uh, artist cocktails like this one, uh, Star Master, that um, I uh, invented based on uh, one of the works of Ian Hamilton Finley. Uh, we we also push further this idea of storytelling uh, into the brand world uh, by working with uh, friends of mine, these uh, fantastic two guys, many of you know, Simone and Andrea from Forma Fantasma. And uh, it is interesting uh, how New York Times referred to them uh, that they uh, design firm that spins modern objects from ancient tales. So exactly as uh, uh, the topic uh, of today. And so they design kind of uh, all these uh, objects that we're using, the glassware and uh, all, all uh, the rest of parafernalia, as I call it, mm -hmm. uh, for us. And I would like to finish this uh, absolutely long talk with, uh, uh, with another quote that you can find on, uh, on our glass topper. Uh, it's our brand motto. And this motto is, comes from somebody who is a very important uh, person. I think that he should be, as Duchamp, taught at uh, schools, elementary schools, uh, and uh, at business schools. So he's the guy that really played uh, a very important role in the history of this uh, country. Uh, he pushed Elizabeth I, for example, to develop Navy, and the fact that uh, uh, the UK has become what it has become because of him. For example, he designed also the whole coronation ceremony. So this coronation ceremony will be executed again uh, during the Charles the the uh, third uh, <laughs> um, uh, coronation. Sorry, because my favorite one is Charles the uh, first, and he's the second favorite. But anyway, um, I'm a royalist, by the way. Um, and I used to work for a brand called Royal Salute, created for the uh, coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. Um, and so uh, Dr. John D., he was one of the most uh, erudite people uh, at that time in the 16th, 16th century. He had biggest private library uh, at that time. And so one of these, his sayings, he said, plura latent quam patent. And I think this is, uh, well, this means more is heed, this is in Old English, more is heed than uttered. And I really believe that this is also uh, kind of uh, a good quote for the whole seminar uh, and storytelling, that stories cannot be told right into your face. I think the best stories are the ones that leave space 
for the spectator, leave space for uh, the people to participate in the storytelling as um, we discussed. So, uh, well, thank you very much. Thank you, Vadim. You actually put an exclamation mark beautifully <laughs> off this, to this whole conversation that you had today evening that says storytelling <laughs> as an art rather than art of storytelling. And, and you do it very well. Um, and uh, you took us through varied zone, from time zone to different genres, where we're going to all have a heady mix of cocktail, which is waiting for all of us up there by Ili and Cartel team. Thank you all. Thank you for being with us. Anybody has a question for Vadim, who's a brand strategist and a storyteller? Yeah. Hello. Thank you so much for your brilliant talk. It was very interesting and beautiful. Um, Thank you. The question might be quite simple, but I think it's quite subjective too. So I'm just interested in your experience and your opinion. What do you think comes first when you build a brand? Is it more about aesthetics or the concept that you put into it, the story? I'm not saying narrative, because I know visuals is also the narrative, isn't it? But what comes first in your experience? Is it something that you want to see from the outside look of it, like in terms of the aesthetics, or is it the story that you put definitely, in? Uh, definitely the concept. Uh, definitely the concept, because uh, without a good concept, without the really clear vision, nothing, absolutely nothing could, could be done. In, in, in my opinion, I think there could be other uh, ways of creating uh, things, but uh, I really believe that it's, uh, it's the concept. And, uh, but that said, uh, the concept is as good as the execution. If you cannot execute the concept, your concept is a piece of shit. So, uh, so concept is first, but execution is uh, it's like a butterfly, you know? It, a uh, butterfly cannot fly with, with one wing, you know, so, um, voila. Thank you. Oh, you have a... I mean, you really don't want uh, drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the last one. Um, thank you very much for the talk. I just wanted to ask, why do you think art works in branding? Do you think it's, for example, um, because people, the public, us, have a kind of respect to art, and if we lost this respect to art, would art then lose its relevance to branding? Thank you. I think uh, very, uh, uh, very philosophically speaking, I think uh, brand, and please people from the art world, don't kill me, uh, <laughs> I think brand is a mental concept uh, that is able to communicate something, some values. And I think the artist, uh, again, with a humble uh, uh, respect to uh, uh, all here, I think also needs to communicate. I've never seen, I have a lot of friends, artists, I've never seen an artist that says, oh, actually, I really would like my work to be uh, uh, hung in my uh, toilet or my bathroom, you know? I haven't seen these people. Uh, artists, really takes, uh, absorbs whatever uh, he or she needs to absorb and then regurgitate this uh, and really would like to, uh, for others to, to see that communication. Sometimes people understand, some, sometimes people don't. In any case, uh, contemporary art is a language that needs to be learned uh, like everything else. So, and brand also communicates. And I think uh, the objective of the brand is an objective of marketing is really communicate the values uh, behind the brands. Uh, uh, the fact that uh, art is much more revered today is simply because art has deserved this position for many centuries. You know, marketing is a very young discipline. Uh, it exists only since I would say Edward Bernays, the, the nephew of uh, Freud, invented marketing, you know, uh, uh, in the first campaigns that he did for Lucky Strike and the like in the beginning of the century. Uh, but artists have been working for brands uh, way before. You know, if you look at the history of, uh, of branding, artists have been involved in, uh, uh, in brands, uh, you know, since the beginning. You know, Chupa Chup's logo is designed 
by whom? By Salvador Dali, you know, uh, and uh, Yves Saint Laurent logo was uh, designed by Rudolf Moron Cassandra, the French artist, uh, art deco artist, etc., etc. So, um, yes, uh, marketing is just a young profession. It needs to professionalize, it needs to uh, get further. I really believe that culture should be taught at business schools. You know, I did Harvard, I did INSEAD, and I tell to both of them because I teach there that the, the curriculum is piece of shit because there is no culture there. Uh, the best marketers I met in my life are the people who, uh, whose general cultural level is highest. You know, these are the great marketers because they know the culture, they can connect things, they can see through, etc., etc. Et so, uh, yeah, that, that would be my answer because marketing is a young profession. Thank you. Thank you, Vadim. And I thank you all for attending and I, I hope you found the session um, as interesting as, as we enjoyed putting it together. Uh, we've had a filmmaker and an art director with us. We've had an artist who thinks and probes questions us and probes thinking. We've had somebody who plays with beautifully with colors and words and throw emotions onto it. We had Tim Marlowe who borrows stories and retell. And we had Vadim who says, hey, to who talks from the brand perspective and how brand needs to narrate stories and, and vice versa. Thank you, Cartel, for providing this platform to us. And um, it, was, it was amazing when, when Lawrence and, and Cartel team called to, to curate this evening as part of London Design Festival. Um, we played it, we, we figured out that there is a, a event or there is a curation idea in the brand itself, you know, K Art Tell. And uh, that's how the art of story evolved. And we are lucky to have the panel of professionals and curators and, and narrators <laughs> who narrated such a varied genre of storytelling. Uh, thank you, Kartil, and thank you for thank you all for being with us and enjoy the drinks post here. <laughs>